Hello. Today we're going to do spark plugs on the bike. Um, because I think they need changed. It's running a wee bit rough. And it's probably the plugs that's causing it. Now, this is a MT-01 V-Twin. It's, it's got four spark plugs, although it's two cylinders, one in here. There's one in here that I've taken out already, and there's two on the other side. So there's two plugs in each cylinder. Now, the one I've taken out, as you can see, it's no bad, it's a wee bit darkish. Um, the gap's quite big. This is an iridium plug. I put these in because iridium are the best, right? <laughs> Not really. Um, and I'll try and explain a wee bit. This is NGK. This is the basic plug for your bike. For the MT-01 it's a DPR7EA9. Now this is a resistor plug, it means it's got a resistor inside here. And what the resistor does is it stops electrical interference to your ECU or any of the electrical parts of your bike. If your bike, the, the way you can tell is by the number on the plug, if it has an R in it, it means it's a resistor plug. If this is what your bike or your car came with, a resistor plug, you must always put a resistor in it. If it didn't come with a resistor plug, then you can use either. But if it came with a resistor plug, you must always use a resistor plug in it, or it could interfere with the running of your bike, your ECU, immobiliser, anything like that. Anyway, this is the basic plug, copper core, cheapest chips, and this is what I'm going to put in the bike, compared to the iridium. This iridium's done about let me see, oh, 45, it's really done about 30, 35,000 k's. There's a fair bit of wear in the top there, the gap's quite big. And you can tell it's iridium by the size of the pin. Tiny wee pin there in the centre of the electrode. Whereas the copper one is nice and thick. I don't know if you can see that or not, I can't really see the screen on my camera, but however. Now, let's see, the original plugs came with a copper core, the spark comes from the top, or the electric goes from the top down through the plug, through the copper, and out the bottom and sparks across to this terminal on the bottom, that's your spark. Okay, now the iridium plug is much the same except the pin down through the middle is very small, very thin, very fine. Now, for a basic plug you'll pick them up cheap. For the iridium or platinum, you'll pay a lot of money for these. And, obviously, because they're a better plug, aren't they? Hmm, not really. The reason iridium and now platinum plugs are used is because the centre core can withstand the heat a lot easier than the copper core. So if you have something wrong with your engine and your plug's heating up, it won't melt. <laughs> Which isn't going to happen with that anyway, because your bike shouldn't overheat. Um, plus, copper conducts much better than what um, platinum or iridium does. Copper conducts much better and you get a much better spark. Doesn't matter what anybody tells you, people will tell you, yeah, iridium plugs are the best, platinum is the best. Absolutely bollocks. Copper is the best conductor, a copper plug will give you a much better spark, far better than iridium or platinum. It might not quite last as long, but you're not talking about that much difference, and I'm going to try it with this. When I put them in, I'm at about 45,000, we'll see how long we get. But these are probably the best plugs you'll use as a copper core, if you want performance. If you want to go for iridium or platinum, Yep, they might last a bit longer because the centre's a different type of material, but they don't conduct as well. They do conduct, but not as well. So why do they make them? Well, these iridium and platinum plugs, a lot of them are made for turbocharged cars where the engines run really hot, or high compression performance vehicles, new vehicles, um, where the plugs are put under a lot of strain, so they use platinum or iridium. 
Um, I've used the copper ones, the copper could melt because they run at such a high temperature. Um, so if you've got a bike that came with copper plugs and that's what it says to use in your book, then <laughs> that's what to use. Spending all that money on iridium or platinum is just going to lose your performance. So stick with the copper, stick what's best. And what's best for them, TO1? is copper plugs so out come the iridium anyway the mt one's probably one of the hardest bikes to take plugs out of because you've got the two on this side which are easy to get dead simple one there and one there but on the other side here's the other one another one in here now, people have said take the tank off, things like that, to change the plugs out, but I found if you use the tools that came with the bike, you can easily pop that down onto the plug, and it just sits, the tip of it just sits up enough to put the spanner on and turn. You can pop the plug out, pop it back in. That one's a wee bit more difficult, but you can do it. Anyway, I'm going to change these plugs over and see how I get on. So here we go, got the first plug ready, um, the gap in the top is between 80 or 0.8 and 0.9 mil, um, you've got to have the spark right, these usually come pre-gapped anyway, if not you can buy a feeler gauge and you pick out the 0.8 mil and check it in the gap, it should be just a nice snug tight fit, just like that. That's quite tight, that's perfect. And then once you have that done, you take your old plug out. And when you take your old plug out, have a look at it. You can tell if the bike's been running rich or lean. Make sure you clean round your plug hole. And whatever you do, don't drop your plug. And put your plug in. Try and turn it a wee bit by hand, make sure it's going in easy enough. Oh god. I need two hands to do this, I think. Just give it a wee tighten up. And it is supposed to be set a certain torque. Um, obviously I'm not going to use a torque wrench, but I'll put it in till it's nice and tight. Not overly tight, but tight enough to seal the washer and it should be done. I'm going to switch the camera off now while I tighten it because you need two hands, you don't want to break it. Now, first one's all done. We're on to the second one. And second plug out, as you can see, it's been sealed okay. Just a wee bit sooty. A bit more wear on that one than what was in the other one. Hmm, size of the gap. Yeah, definitely needing changed. So there we have two in, both on the left hand side. Now we'll go to the other side. So, glasses on. We're in this side now. And as you see the keys in there, I've pulled the cable out, put the plug key on the plug and just a matter of unscrewing it. A lot of people find difficulty trying to get this side off. Once you've got it screwed out, pull out the plug like that, and there's, yeah, it's a bit worn that one as well. Here's a new plug for this one, and of course it's harder to put in, but we'll pop the plug into the tool like that, and we should be able to just slip it in. Gently drag it across till you find it pop in the hole and then just turn it so it starts to screw in. Now, next one's the back plug, the awkward one, um, which is in here. You can get it in here, but I'm going to do the clean the, the air filter. So I thought, what the hell, just wipe the tank off. It's easy. Two wee bolts takes this cover off. Now two bolts whips the tank up like this. Don't know if you can see, but here's your plug 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 lead to the back one. You just pull it off the plug. And there's your spark plugged in that hole. 
Just straight down there, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's probably a bit dark. But you plug straight down that hole. So I'll go ahead and take that one out now. You can slacken the plug off like this. And then once it's slack like that, just put your hand down the inside. Grab the plug key and you can turn it, you can't really see because it's so dark in there. But you can see the plug key there. And there is the plug. Yep, warm. So, we'll dump that. You ever wonder what the brown ring around the plug is? That's because you get a lot of static electric built up around there. It doesn't do any harm, you're not losing a spark, but what it does is it's like a magnet, it draws all the dirt and oil and the shit. So that's the bit that's visible above the, the plug cap. Um, or below the plug cap, and it causes that discoloration, but nothing to worry about. So anyway, get a new plug, pop it in to the socket. Now, we've already checked the gap, and the gap's at 0.8mm, perfect. And from the top, we'll just pop that into place. So, that's it on, plug leads on, pushed on all the way, and that's the spark plugs changed. Now, well I've got it in pieces, I'm going to do the air filter. Air filter's easy, one, two, three, four, five bolts, take this cover off, and change the filter or clean it, as the case may be, because I've got a key in end. Okay. I've taken the, the bolts out, so the cover should come off. Yeah, this is a rubber seal on the cover, make sure you don't break it. Put it somewhere safe, and the air filter should just pull out. Not that bad, actually. Yeah, a bit dusty. There's inside of the air box. So, with this being a, a K&N, see the back of it is a bit dirty. I've got K&N cleaning stuff, so I'll give it a spray, clean it, dry it off, re-oil it, put it back in, and that'll be her ready. K&N um, recharger for K&N filters. You have this, which is a cleaner. So the side that the air goes into, through, like that's the engine side, this is where the air goes through. You give that a good liberal spray with the cleaner. Check in between the grooves, make sure there's nothing stuck in there. I'm getting this everywhere. Give it a good soak, leave it for a while. Um, then give it another good soak and then rinse it out. Give it a damn good rinse out and then it's just a matter of drying it off before you can re-oil it now dry it off don't put it in the tumble dryer i know you're tempted to but don't i sometimes use the wife's hair dryer and just give it a dry very very gently until it's dried out and then oil it put it back in and of course we'll be all so soon Dry your hair dry, yeah, dry your hair dry. Dry it out nice and slowly. You don't want to heat the thing up too much, just a nice gentle breeze. Dry off all the moisture before you oil it. Well, now that the filter's done, we've got to put some oil on it. Now, it is a very steady hand. It's actually, the bottle's quite well, it's what you've got to do is just pour some oil along each strand, or each fin. Goodness, get a thing sitting so as it doesn't move. Along each fin, just a wee bit, not too much. Just like that. Don't overdo it. Too much oil can be just as 
much of a pain in the ass and not enough so you go right along do it to the end turn it over do the same with that side and then once you're done leave it the oil spreads right through the filter shouldn't take too long that's the filter all oiled as you can see now it looks quite pink when you look through it with the oil but if you look inside each groove there you'll see how far the oil's run down you wait until the oil saturated the whole of the filter because you've done both sides it'll seep down towards the middle and meet each other and then once that's all covered don't be tempted to put more on thinking you've not put enough because you don't want to saturate it or the thing will be sucking in oil um, and that's just enough on there it's starting to soak right through already so good stuff then I'll give it another 10 minutes and then um, we can put that on well job's done so we'll start her up see if she sounds sounding thick over much better oh yeah so that's it spark plugs done